Hi there, Joe Fernandez here, and we'll be going through a Get Started Guide Windwalker Edition. During the making of this guide, I discussed at great length with FedEx, a renowned Windwalker. He has achieved many Rank 1 titles throughout WOD and Legion, as well as competing in Kiev 2016 European Regionals. Nearly all of the Windwalker builds will mainly stay the same. We will go over these Azerite traits later, but first, we will talk about the normal talent choices. The first row ultimately remains the same since Legion. Eye of the Tiger frees up a key binding, making it a lot easier to play with for newcomers on Windwalker. Chi Wave is the best DPS increase in this row, although it is a slight increase. It also allows to help for the mastery rotation at times during burst. For example, you could use Blackout Kick into Chi Wave into another Blackout Kick. Chi Burst is however very competitive, especially if you need a bit of extra damage. It now grants 1-2 to two Chi depending on target's hit, making it very appealing where you don't want to use Chi Wave in case you need more controlled damage. Row 30 is another row that has remained the same, resulting in Tiger's Lust being the best choice. Having a Rude Breaker on a short cooldown, which can be used on yourself or partners, is incredibly powerful in many situations. If used correctly and wisely, this will definitely be the best choice in this tier. For those situations when there aren't roots to deal with, or needing to help your partner's kite, then Celerity can be a good choice. It provides you with extra self mobility which can be very strong against certain classes. This row got changed a little which has had a major effect. Energizing Elixir has been hit with a big nerf making it unappealing in comparison to Ascension. Ascension now becomes the go to, gaining an extra chi point as well as good energy regen crucial for a Windwalker's gameplay. This is due to have an incredible synergy with Rushing Jade Wind, which we will get into later. The last talent in this row, Fist of the White Tiger, is basically the old artifact use. Although it hits very little, making it really lackluster in its use. FedEx believes right now it won't be used, but if later it were to get buffed, it could have potential uses. Tiger Tail Sweep would be used most of the time. The increased range along with the reduced cooldown of Leg Sweep means you'll land your stun easier and more often. Ring of Peace is also a crazy good talent used for the majority of time to peel against melee. It can also have its niche uses, knocking enemies off the Blade's Edge Mountain Bridge, interrupting important casts or CC, or denying potential CC, for example a Priest's Fear. We'd recommend the use of this talent against any double melee team, as it can deny them a lot of pressure whilst you or your partners use the Ring of Peace to your advantage. Good Karma's effect is still very good, however due to the loss of one of the other two talents in this row, makes it not worth in nearly all situations. For row 75, Inner Strength will usually be the main talent, Windwalkers are generally squishy in the sense that in a stun log or when enemies have high uptime. Having an extra 10% damage reduction the majority of the game is an excellent way to decrease constant pressure as well as having reduced damage taken during stun logs. This means this talent could be the key to your survival in many situations. When dealing against any double caster composition then having diffuse magic can be great. It provides you with a huge defensive cooldown against magic damage on a low cooldown, making it highly valuable. It could also be used offensively against teams that don't hit you, making inner strength useless in that situation. Against RMP for example, they usually won't try to kill a Windwalker, so having diffuse magic to break a Frost Nova can be more beneficial. Dampen Harm could have its potential uses against high burst teams when inner strength isn't enough. 
Usually inner strength is just always better, but when that isn't enough, alongside with diffuse magic, then damp and harm could be worth a shot. Hit combo is extremely bad right now, due to not abiding with the combination in your rotation, thus being a wasteful talent. We will talk later why that is, but for now, unless things change, don't pick up hit combo. Rushing Jade Wind is definitely the main choice here, proving to be incredible with its damage increase in both single or multi-target situations. It gives way more damage than hit combo would anyway, and now can just be used once in an arena game, feeding your energy into it. This is why Ascension Synergy is good with this talent, and why it's important to not use Tiger Palm when at 50 energy, otherwise you will cancel the Rushing Jade Wind effect. If you want some extra burst and are aiming for a 1-2 to two minute game, Zwen the White Tiger can be a great choice for this. It has increased burst and is on a 2 minute cooldown now, making it have more uses, however if the game goes on too long, then Russian Jade Wind would be a better choice. Serenity will be used 100% of the time when running with 3 swift roundhouse Azerite traits. This is because this is the core of the build, stacking these traits, popping Serenity and doing absolutely insane damage on your targets. It not only gives crazy burst, but allows for an increased reduction of rising sun kicks, making it very easy to use and getting more absurd damage output. This is the only talent that affects the build a lot, and you must have the swift roundhouse traits to put this talent in effect. If for some reason you don't have access to swift roundhouse azurite traits, then you'll stick with word in dragon punch. This is great for consistent damage and can be used meanwhile, but it is essential to try and get the swift roundhouse traits in order to spec serenity and deal absurd damage. Now that we have discussed the normal talents, we can talk about the honor talents. Firstly, we can talk about the trinket choice. Now, Windwalkers are usually susceptible during stuns, so having a gladiator's medallion in order for you to kite or use touch of karma is essential for you to avoid death. The only race where this may change in terms of not wanting to use the gladiator's medallion is if you are a human. Human can provide a failsafe to dying its stun on its own, meaning the use of relentless can come into play instead. You could play the medallion with human, but you must be careful, as it now has an increased ICD of 1 minute 30 seconds, instead of 30 seconds like before, as well as having a 3 minute cooldown. Knowing what your trinket choice is one thing, now it's important to know what honor talents you'll be using nearly all the time, as well as knowing the other honor talents with its potential use. Having this knowledge is very strong and will make choosing your honor talents more diverse, which can be the difference between winning and losing arena games. First off, we have two talents that are nearly always taken, being Disabling Reach and Fortifying Brew. Disabling Reach gives Windwalkers such an extensive use of their Disable ability. Having the range on it not only means you can peel more efficiently, but you can catch up to your enemies with more ease too. Using Disable on an already snared target will also root the enemy in place and has no cooldown. This is insanely powerful for peeling melee, which could also have its niche uses. For instance, root in a warrior mid-charge, rendering his charge useless. Fortifying Brew is a huge defensive cooldown that can save you many times in an arena match giving you more health as well as added damage reduction. If you feel that the enemy team aren't trying to kill you or target you, then you could use this offensively with Touch of Death, as the damage will be increased due to your increased health pool, adding to the burst of your Touch of Death. Knowing that those two will mostly be your main honor talents leaves us with a third option that can be changed depending on what you face. When dealing with enemy melee causing high pressure, having another CC effect to delay or stop their damage and their own CC is highly valuable. Windwalkers can have this on a low cooldown of 1 minute as well as having a 30 yard range on grapple weapon, making it much easier to use. Fast feet can be a powerful mobility tool against classes that can hinder you a lot. 
Its main use will be against Frost Mages, as they have a lot of big snares which are important to get out of ASAP. It will also allow you to catch up to them easier, connecting damage more often. Ride the Wind is another powerful honor talent that could have different uses for your partners. You could either use it offensively with another melee, helping them to stick on your target, or you can use it defensively for your healer, allowing them to kite other melee, buying them more time to heal. Losing healing elixirs as a Windwalker meant the loss of a lot of self-healing. Having control of the mists gives us a free costing instant heal that could have its benefits when needed to survive constant pressure, but may not be too useful compared to the other defensive honor talents. When against enemy teams with high armor, it could sometimes be too difficult to land a kill. If this happens, Tiger Eye Brew could be a great way to find that kill, as you will bypass their armor completely, allowing for insane rise in sun kick damage during that buff. Heavy handed strikes could have its potential use if needed to have extra peeling abilities, as it sounds good on paper. Realistically though, it can be very easy to stop as well as not being able to use it in situations where you'd want to, making it a talent that has potential but not be used. Another note is that you cannot use Fists of Fury whilst you have a two-handed weapon equipped, and due to this build, you'd want a two-handed weapon unless you are out of options and want to try heavy-handed strikes to peel. This talent seems quite lackluster, but it could be great against teams where you can reliably stun three targets. This is however very unlikely in a 3v3 arena, but could have great potential in raid battlegrounds. Windwalker has a couple of incredibly strong Azerite traits and one lesser but powerful trait option too. It's important to note that when talking about these builds, it's assumed that you stack all three of them to gain the most amount of DPS from these builds. The best Azerite trait for Windwalker is the Swift Roundhouse trait. This is completely insane as it allows you to deal devastating damage with your Rising Sun Kick whilst you have two stacks of this trait. This means that sometimes you may ignore your combo mastery, as it's simply better to get the blackout kick trait stacks faster to get your powerful rising sun kicks in more often. It's easy to build this pressure as you only need to blackout kick twice to acquire said stacks of trait, to deal absurd damage destroying your enemies. This is why you change your 100 talent to serenity, adding to the one shot potential of this build. This trait seems very overpowered right now, and even with nerfs, it could still be the best build. The only way it wouldn't be used is if it gets over nerfed, which leaves us with the other two choices of Azerite traits. Meridian Strikes would be the second best option, dealing devastating damage with your Touch of Death. Again, triple stacking this trait allow you to do absurd damage, potentially going through big damage reduction cooldowns. The main weakness however is that immunity cooldowns such as Ice Block or Bop can get rid of this completely making it do zero damage. It also has less damage uptime compared to Swift Roundhouse but could overtake it if Swift Roundhouse gets nerfed. If both of these traits get heavily nerfed then Sunrise Technique will be your third option. This grants you added passive and burst damage making it a great trait. But due to the strength of Swift Roundhouse, you'll most likely be sticking to that until Blizzard nerfs said traits. Gearing is a very important aspect of WoW PvP. The current stat priority for Windwalkers in Arena will be Agility, then Mastery, then Versatility, then Haste, then Crit. Mastery being your top secondary stat may seem very confusing at first, as we do ignore the way our mastery works most of the time. The reason why it's so good is that it will still add to the rising sun kick damage after we use any other abilities, providing us with more one-shot opportunities against your enemies. Rising sun kick is also your top damage in arenas due to this build and mastery increases its damage the most. Versatility is the second best stat, and it is so close to mastery that it almost rivals it, and may become stronger when you lack too much versatility. 
Haste is useful for energy regen and reduction of Rise's Sun Kick, but not as useful compared to versatility or mastery. Critical Strike is heavily reduced in PvP and should be avoided as much as possible. Since Mastery is your best stat, you want to apply Mastery Enchants to your rings as well as the Mastery Navigation Enchant on your weapon. Another key aspect to gearing on a Windwalker is that due to this build, you'd want to have a two-handed weapon equipped. This makes your Rise and Sun Kick hit even harder, adding to the crazy burst pressure of it. For the alliance ratio, human still seems valuable due to having relentless with human. This can be useful for windwalkers to have the ability to not die in attempted stun goes, as well as having the benefits from relentless. However, human has been heavily nerfed, making their trinket a 3 minute cooldown, as well as having an ICD with the gladiator's medallion of 1 minute 30 seconds. So the use of other alliance ratios can be very useful still such as Draenei, Gnome, and both the Dwarven Racials. As for the Horde, Orc once again reigns supreme with its ability to have the Gladiator's Medallion in conjunction with Hardiness, making it the best Racial by far. Windwalker relies heavily on their single target pressure and burst, so doing it effectively is a necessity. It differs from your usual PV rotation, due to the mechanics incorporated with your Azerite traits, making you ignore your combo strikes in order to do maximum burst. Your single target prioritization will look like this. Number 1, Russian Jade Wind. Number 2, Tiger Palm. Number 3, Rise and Sun Kick. Number 4, 2 times Blackout Kicks. Number 5, Chi Wave or Chi Burst. As you can see it looks simple but it can be a bit tricky. The main aim for this rotation is to manage your Swift Roundhouse trait buff, so that every time you use Rise and Sun Kick you have 2 stacks of the trait, dealing absurdly high damage. With Rushing Jade Wind, you'll maintain it the whole game if you manage your energy properly, unless you want to cancel it in order to not break important CC, for example, Polymorph. This is why it's important to not Tiger Palm if you are under 53 energy, as you risk losing your Russian Jade Wind. You should also not use it when you're at 4 stacks or higher Chi, as this will overcap your Chi, putting it to waste. So use Rising Sun Kick or Blackout Kick instead. Notice that Fist of Fury isn't in the damage rotation. That's because it deals incredibly low damage right now, but it may be incorporated if it gets buffed. Although if this build doesn't get nerfed, then having a two-handed weapon will be best, meaning you can't use Fists of Fury anyway, as it requires the use of two one-handed weapons. Monks don't deal great multi-target damage anymore, as they lack using Fists of Fury or Whirling Dragon Punch in this build. However, you can still deal great multi-target damage against two melee or close together targets, with Russian Jade Wind as it deals great damage and doesn't get hindered by hitting more targets. It also provides a nice debuff known as Mystic Touch on your targets, increasing their physical damage taken by 5%, which could be very nice when playing with Warriors, Rogues, Ferals or Hunters. When bursting as a Windwalker, you already have significantly high burst due to the traits, although you can burst even harder with your Serenity or Touch of Death. Serenity is the most essential for ideal burst. The PvP nerfs of Serenity have all been reverted in BFA, meaning it gives Twin Walkers 20% increased damage, makes Chi consumers free, and gives a cooldown reduction on spells being 100% quicker. This cooldown reduction also works when you blackout kick, as each time you blackout kick, you reduce the cooldown on rising sun kick. The result of this means that you can rotate between doing one rising sun kick to two blackout kicks repetitively during the entire duration of serenity, giving you absurdly high burst damage. That's all it takes to burst as a windwalker, plus you could touch of death beforehand for even more added burst if needed. The only preparation you'd want beforehand is to get two stacks of Swift Roundhouse before you start with a Serenity 
followed by a rising sun kick. So to recap on Windwalker, make sure you get the swift roundhouse on all three Azerite trait pieces of gear. Make sure to not energy starve your rushing Jade Wind, maintaining it as much as possible to deal as much damage as possible. Master your rotation and remember during Serenity to change your rotation to one rise in Sun Kick followed by two Blackout Kicks. Keep practicing with your different honor talents as they are essential to Windwalker gameplay. You have a lot of unique and important honor talents that can change the tides of an arena game. That's all for our Get Started Windwalker Monk Guide. If you learned or enjoyed this guide, don't forget to hit that plus skill button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.